How many human species have walked Earth? A concise, evidence-based answer. How many human species have ever walked the Earth? It's a simple question, but the answer is anything but. For most of us, the story of human evolution is a simple, linear progression. A stooped creature gradually stands upright, becomes a caveman, and evolves into us. But the reality uncovered over the last century is far more complex, more crowded, and infinitely more fascinating. The story of humanity isn't a solo performance; it's a sprawling epic with a huge cast of characters. For the vast majority of our evolutionary history, we were not alone. So the real question isn't just how many, but who were they? To answer that, we turn to paleoanthropology, the scientific study of human origins. Paleoanthropologists are detectives of deep time. Their clues are the fossilized remains of our ancient relatives: a jawbone from an Ethiopian valley, a skeleton from a Spanish cave, or a single finger bone from Siberia. They also study the artifacts our ancestors left behind, from crude stone choppers to exquisite hand axes. But the fossil record is notoriously incomplete. It's like trying to assemble a puzzle with only a fraction of the pieces and no box art to guide you. Every new discovery can rewrite what we thought we knew, adding a new character or an unexpected plot twist. This fragmentary evidence is why experts can't agree on a precise number. In paleoanthropology, there's a long-standing debate between lumpers and splitters. Lumpers see variation and tend to group similar fossils into fewer, broader species. They might argue that differences between two skulls are no more significant than those between modern humans. Splitters focus on subtle anatomical distinctions, arguing they are significant enough to warrant a new species, championing a more diverse family tree. As a result, the official count of species in our genus. Can range from a dozen to over twenty, depending on which expert you ask. It's a moving target, but even with this debate, a remarkable cast of characters has emerged. We have the handyman, among the first to consistently make stone tools over two million years ago. Then there was the great wanderer, the first of our relatives to stride out of Africa and populate vast swaths of Asia. We have the famous, our closest extinct relatives, powerfully built hunters adapted to Ice Age Europe, and we have discovered astonishing outliers like the diminutive hobbit of Indonesia, and the mysterious Denisovans, a species known to us from little more than a few fragments of bone and the ghost of their DNA. This brings us to the most profound revelation of 21 Saint Century anthropology. These species didn't just follow one another in sequence; their time on Earth overlapped, often for hundreds of thousands of years. There were times when multiple distinct types of humans coexisted, each with their own unique anatomy and culture. And they didn't just live side by side; they met, they interacted, and they interbred. Thanks to the revolutionary field of paleogenomics, we can now analyze ancient DNA from fossils. The genetic evidence is unequivocal. If your ancestry lies outside of Africa, you carry Neanderthal DNA. Many people also carry Denisovan DNA. The clean lines between species have become beautifully blurred. So our story is not a simple line, but a tangled branching bush. Paleoanthropology identifies at least ten distinct species in the genus Homo. Different lineages with distinct anatomies, behaviors, and geographic ranges. These species appear, overlap, and sometimes interbreed across the last two million years. Most of these branches eventually withered, leaving only one survivor, us. But their legacy is not entirely lost. It is written in the fossil record, etched into ancient stones, and carried as a faint echo within the DNA of every single person alive today. This is the story we will now explore. To truly grasp the breadth of our family tree, let's journey through some of the key players in this sprawling evolutionary saga. Notable examples include the very first member of our own genus, Homo habilis. Appearing around 2.4 million years ago, 
Their name means handyman, a direct tribute to them being the first species consistently associated with the creation of stone tools. While their brains were only slightly larger than an ape's, this technological leap was a monumental step. These Oldowan tools, though simple, unlocked new food sources, allowing them to butcher carcasses and access nutrient-rich bone marrow, fueling further brain development down the line. Next came Homo erectus, the upright man. This species was a true pioneer. With longer legs and a more modern human-like body, they were built for endurance, becoming the first hominins to disperse far beyond Africa. Their reign was incredibly long, lasting over 1.5 million years. They developed more advanced tools like the iconic Actulian hand axe, and most importantly, they likely harnessed fire. This control over fire revolutionized their existence, offering warmth, protection from predators, and the ability to cook food, which made it easier to digest and unlocked vital energy. Then there's Homo heidelbergensis, a crucial link in our story. Living between 700,000 and 200,000 years ago, they are widely considered the common ancestor of both Neanderthals in Eurasia and our own species, Homo sapiens, in Africa. They were tall, powerful hunters of large game, using sophisticated tools like finely crafted wooden spears. At the Cima de los Huesos in Spain, the remains of nearly 30 individuals were found deep within a cave, leading some scientists to believe this may represent one of the earliest forms of intentional body disposal or ritual. Our most famous extinct relatives are Homo neanderthalensis. Far from the brutish cavemen of popular caricature, Neanderthals were intelligent and highly adapted to the cold climates of Ice Age Eurasia. They had brains as large, if not larger than ours, and a sophisticated culture. They produced advanced tools, hunted big game, wore clothing, and there is strong evidence they buried their dead and used symbolic objects like eagle talons as jewelry. We also know from our own DNA that when modern humans left Africa, they met and interbred with Neanderthals. Perhaps the most mysterious are the Denisovans, a species known almost entirely from their DNA. They were discovered not from a skeleton, but from a single tiny finger bone found in Denisova Cave in Siberia. Genetic sequencing revealed they were a sister group to the Neanderthals, but a distinct lineage. Like Neanderthals, they also interbred with early Homo sapiens, and their genetic legacy is found today in many populations in Southeast Asia and Melanesia, possibly contributing adaptations for high-altitude living. Evolution can take strange turns on islands. On Flores, Indonesia, we found Homo floresiensis, nicknamed the Hobbit. Standing just over a meter tall, this tiny species had a small brain but still made tools and hunted. And in the Philippines, fossils revealed Homo luzonensis, another small-bodied species with a bizarre mix of ancient and modern traits. These island endemics demonstrate that for much of our history, the world was home to a diversity of human forms far stranger than we ever imagined. A more recent and baffling discovery is Homo naledi, found deep within the nearly inaccessible Rising Star Cave system in South Africa. This species presents a puzzling mosaic of traits. It had a small orange-sized brain and primitive shoulders like an ancient hominin, but its hands and feet were strikingly modern. The discoverers have argued that these individuals were intentionally placed in the cave, a complex behavior that, along with other controversial claims of fire use and engravings, challenges our ideas about the connection between brain size and intelligence. And finally, there is us, Homo sapiens, the wise man, the last human species standing. Originating in Africa around 300,000 years ago, our species is defined not just by our high, rounded skulls and prominent chins, but by an unprecedented explosion of creativity and symbolic thought. We developed complex language, created breathtaking art, formed vast social networks, and developed technologies that allowed us to adapt and thrive in every corner of the planet. 
It was this unique combination of cognitive flexibility and cooperative culture that ultimately allowed us to become the sole inheritors of the human story. Several Homo species coexisted. Genetic and fossil evidence show interbreeding occurred. Neanderthal and Denisovan DNA survives in many modern populations. So human evolution is a branching, entangled process, not a straight line. So why does this ancient family album truly matter? The answer isn't just academic. It's written into the very fabric of who we are today, in our DNA, our cultures, and our societies. It's a story about survival, adaptation, and connection. First, our biology. The story of these ancient encounters is in our genes. Genetic sequencing reveals our ancestors interbred with other hominins. Many modern humans with ancestry outside of Africa carry Neanderthal DNA. This inheritance is a double-edged sword. It likely boosted our immune systems against local pathogens as our ancestors migrated. But these same ancient genes are now linked to a higher risk for things like allergies and depression in our modern environments. And it wasn't just Neanderthals. The elusive Denisovans left a remarkable legacy. The most stunning example is the E-Pass 1 gene variant found in modern Tibetans. This super-athlete gene, inherited from Denisovans, allows them to thrive in the thin air of high-altitude plateaus, a living echo of an ancient adaptation gifted from a long-lost cousin. Beyond biology, understanding these species clarifies how modern humans evolved culturally. We can trace the progression of technology, from simple stone choppers to finely crafted hand axes and sophisticated toolkits. Studying their cognitive abilities forces us to ask profound questions. Did they have language? Did they create art? Evidence suggests they were far more complex than the brutish cavemen of popular imagination, laying the cognitive groundwork upon which Homo sapiens would eventually build civilizations. Ultimately, this journey reframes humanity itself. For most of our history, Earth was home to a diversity of human forms. Our current solitude is a recent and perhaps fragile anomaly. The story of humanity isn't a linear march of progress, but a messy, braided stream, with tributaries merging to create the vast river of modern humanity. We are a composite, a mosaic of ancient peoples. This knowledge enriches our identity, connecting us to a family tree far grander and more complex than we ever imagined. For a deeper, source-driven overview, see the references below.